By the middle of summer, the lettuces I had grown previously in cups and transplanted to raised beds were still producing well. The second batch was getting established, growing new leaves each day. But even my first batch, which had a tougher start in the beginning of the season, was growing well under the towering okra plants, which welcomed the warmer days. I had not expected to still be harvesting them by now, so they had exceeded my expectations. The grass mulch had certainly helped them grow large and tender, providing ample water and fertility. And the afternoon shade of the house may have helped also. Two weeks later, the new batch of the summer resistant green bowl variety looked promising, with at least 60% of the transplants flourishing beyond bounds. The summer batch of lettuces, it's, it's looking great, but it's also, there are some failures. About two, a third to half of the cups didn't quite um, develop fast. But the ones that did are looking beautiful and they can already be harvested if I wanted to. I didn't even get a chance to put the wire mesh. I don't know if animals have been eating the other one or if it's some kind of insect um, pressure that's for some reason only attacking the weaker ones. But for the ones that seem to have really um, held to the soil and gotten perhaps into a symbiosis with the with all the life in the soil they've spurred it out into beautiful florets i do see a few worms here in one of them but it doesn't seem to be a major problem i'll probably be harvesting these i will be out for a few weeks so i won't be able to be tending for things as much so i'm changing my plans a bit as to how I take care of this last bed. But everything else looks um, decent. I've been having great success with other crops and I'm really happy with where this is going. And for certain, this variety of lettuce is the type to grow during summer. I was hoping the population of beneficial insects like spiders would increase in the coming years to help me control undesired insects that can attack crops. They certainly appear to have liked these built structures to weave their webs upon. I even found another harbinger of summer, the cicada, which sings incessantly as part of its mating ritual. They were very common in Brazil, and as a child we would go around collecting the skins they left behind from tree trunks. We used to say that they sang so loud it caused their backs to split open. We were also told of Aesop's fable of the cicada and the ant. Cicada, having sung her song all summer long, found herself without a crumb when winter winds did come. Not a scrap was there to find or fly or earthworm any kind. Hungry, she ran off to cry to neighbor ant in specify, asking for a loan of grist, a seed or two so she'd subsist. Just until the coming spring, she said, I'll pay you everything before fall, my word as animal interest in principle. Well, no hasty lender is the ant. It's her finest virtue by a lot. And what did you do when it was hot? She then asked this mendicant. To all comers night and day, I sang. I hope you don't mind. You sang? Why, my joy is unconfined. Now dance the winter away. As a gardener and artist, I've always felt ambivalent about the story. Sure, saving for winter is important, but why survive if there will be no music come spring? You're already entering close to late summer, and the lettuce is looking as beautiful as ever. It's time to already completely harvest this batch here, but that reminds me that I must start a new one using the same technique, and I'll probably still sow the, this summer loving variety because we still have a few weeks of summer weather and after that I'll probably think of transitioning to the mescalone where there are more cold tolerant ones so that we can get into the fall months and probably early winter months. The best thing about this green salad bowl variety is that even as it starts to grow tall developing a flower stalk it retains its tenderness and doesn't quickly become bitter as other lettuces. This increases their usefulness. Of course, eventually they do become inedible, 
The important thing to remember is that during summer, you will have to grow more frequent batches of lettuce, harvesting them as young leaves, if you want a continuous supply. I'll be back right after this commercial. As fall set in and temperatures started to drop, I decided to try growing one more batch of lettuce. Growing it during fall can be a bit trickier, because you must calculate the number of days before the average frost date and compare it to the days till maturity of the variety you are growing. Recently the lettuce has been failing. All the ones that I planted in late summer to early fall have not grown and I attribute this to the very hot and dry weather. I have here one little lettuce that remained. Um, we're bound to get a, a few days of rain this week so I'm gonna take the opportunity to sow the lettuce and hopefully they'll sprout and grow but the problem is is that it's already the first week of October that may be a little bit too late even though the weather hasn't felt like fall yet um, and late summer early fall has been pretty much dog days of summer like August should be. Um, now we've got some cooling and I just don't know if we're gonna have enough time of warm enough weather to have the lettuce growing and actually producing edible sized heads. Um, in any case I'm gonna sow them and hope that I do get one more flush of lettuce this year without using any protection obviously like a cold frame. I hope that the rains are gonna start coming in and we're gonna have enough, at the same time, enough sun and some warm weather so that they produce. And if that's not the case, that means I won't be having lettuce at all. I was sowing them directly on the ground because I didn't have time to deal with seedlings indoors at this time of the year. Perhaps, if I did grow them at starts, I would have better luck having them develop with the hot weather. Timing is essential for a fall garden, but because day length is significantly shorter in spring, lettuce may grow slower. That may throw off the calculations. Part of the reason why the lettuces have failed is due to the fact that I'm sowing them directly and not using my usual method. So this just means that the usual method that I use of growing them in cups just makes more sense. It just makes for a more continuous supply and you ensure that the seedlings, they survive and thrive in the first weeks of development, which is crucial because that's when they need water and they need more, a little bit more care. They've been failing precisely because of that since the weather has been too hot. Whereas with cups, there is more of a guarantee you can put them in a slightly shaded place and not water them as frequently, but still have them thrive. That's what happened in one of my earlier batches, which has actually grown during the summer when there was a lot of, of um, heat happening in the weather. Of course, it was raining a little bit more, but still, because I planted them as cups, they were able to, to immediately root out. Not all of them survived, because of the, the intense heat, but many of them did and flourished and grew into large specimens. For that reason, I plan on growing more with the cups. This is probably one of the last times I sow directly lettuce. I just feel I have more control when I do grow it with the help of the cups and then transplant them. But even if I would get no more lettuce for the end of the year, I was happy with my previous batches early on. Just by incorporating some principles of permaculture in my garden, like finding the right microclimate and mulching heavily. Perhaps if somebody taught the cicada in Aesop's fable about permaculture, it would have sung all summer long while gardening without breaking its back. <laughs> 